What's up guys, Rogue9 here and first off, many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace are the all-in-one providers of the services you need to set up a professional website quickly, easily and without any hassle, but more about them later. I think it was pretty clear from the very moment that he was revealed that Rainbow Six's brand new Defender Wamai was specifically designed to act as a complement and maybe even an alternative to Jaeger. In fact, Ubisoft made this very clear in their recent making of video of Operation Shifting Tides. That's kind of why this season is also very important for us, is bringing an alternative to key roles of Siege that don't have one. Those being Thatcher for Kali and Jaeger for Wamai. But that now begs the question, which of these two operators is better, Wamai or Jaeger? What are their individual strengths and weaknesses? And if you and your team had to pick one or the other, which one would it be? Time to pit these two operators head to head. In order to compare these two operators, we will be judging them on two different spectrums, their gunfighting ability and their gadget utility, and that should be really interesting for both of these characters since Wamai was designed to rival Jaeger on both fronts. Let's look at the loadouts of both operators first before we dive into a detailed comparison. With the M870, Jaeger has access to one of the best buckshot firing shotguns in the game, but at the end of the day, it's still a shotgun. Yes, shotguns can bring some great utility to the table, especially for anchoring defenders like, for instance, smoke. But when it comes to combat effectiveness, the range these things have is so short that you have to be virtually in melee distance to be able to win a gunfight with any degree of certainty. And with shifting tides, things have become even worse for the entire weapon class. Shotguns with their randomized spray patterns have always been about as reliable as an overconfident dock main who gets domed while spawn peeking in the first 5 seconds of almost every round. But with the new limb penetration system, shotguns will now do reduced damage with every pellet that ends up randomly hitting the arms, which makes them even more unreliable. Let's face it, you could be aiming perfectly at the center mass of your opponent at short range, and because of the way the character models hold their arms in front of their bodies at all times in Rainbow Six Siege, half of your pellets could randomly get penalized with a lower damage modifier, and there is no amount of skill that will help you avoid this. You have no control over your pellet pattern and because of this, even when aiming at exactly the same point on exactly the same opponent, two shots in a row could result in significantly different damage being done. My take on this is that until they scrap the no penetration category, or at least move the shotguns to the simple penetration category, this entire weapon class is just too unreliable for me to bother with, and for that reason the M870 will not even factor into the combat effectiveness assessment of Jaeger at this stage. So we're left with three main weapons to compare, Wamai's Org A2 and MP5K, and Jaeger's 416C Carbine. Here is an overview of the most important stats for these three guns, and as you can see the two rifles are actually incredibly closely matched. Let's go over the individual strengths and weaknesses category by category, and my analysis will mostly focus on the two rifles since I only recently compared the MP5K with the AUG in Wamai's loadout meta video. At close range, damage is almost identical although the AUG is quite a bit more effective at long range. The fire rates are also very closely matched, but with a small advantage going in the 416's favor, which then also results in a bit of an advantage in total damage output over time, at least at closer ranges. When it comes to the practical takedown power of each gun against full health opponents, that one extra point of damage per shot actually gives the 416 one less shot to down or kill against level 3 armors. This results in an 88 millisecond shorter time to down or kill in those cases, and the minimally quicker fire rate also gives the 416 a teeny tiny advantage in all of the other cases as well. And when I say teeny tiny, I really mean teeny weeny super tiny because we're talking 7 milliseconds on average here, basically nothing. 
At 35 meters or more though, the differences become quite a bit more apparent, with the Org requiring on average 1.66 shots less to down or kill an opponent across the various armor level and strike location permutations. This results in a time to kill saving of between 68 and 223 milliseconds, with an average saving of 123. That's quite a lot, but of course, the chances of you ever fighting at those distances, especially with neither of these guns having access to an ACOG, are relatively low. It's not impossible to create ultra-long angles as a defender, as Bikini Body has been quite effectively demonstrating in his streams in recent times. Rogue Knight is like, oh yeah, you can't see it. Angles over 25 meters. Checkmate, Rogue. And yes, sometimes I lurk. You can never be quite sure whether I'm there or not. Quietly watching from the shadows, I see everything. <laughs> But I stick by my argument. Most engagements will be at much shorter ranges and once you get to these ultra long range battles and you're playing a defender with no magnified sights, you are most likely going to lose the fight because of a single headshot that your ACOG wielding opponent will have a much easier time achieving than you. The bottom line is that in practice, at the most common engagement ranges, the two guns are almost identical with an ever so slight advantage going to the 416. Capacity is the same, reload times are similar with the Orc reloading quicker from empty and the 416 reloading quicker with ammo still left in the gun. ADS time is the same, and for hipfire, both guns are identical when not moving, so when you're standing, kneeling, or prone, but when you're walking or jogging, the AUG is better, and once you start shooting, the 416 is better. I guess we'll call it a draw between these two rifles, and anyway, the MP5 beats both of them quite handily. And finally, for recoil, let's again consult the in-game charts first. On the left for each gun is the recoil without any muzzle attachments, but with the vertical grip attached, and then on the right for the 416 and MP5 we have the recoil with the muzzle brake, and for the AUG we have the flash hider attached, because this gun was on the naughty list at one time and therefore never received access to the muzzle brake. As you can see, the in-game charts make the 416 look quite challenging to control even with the vertical grip attached, but I also tested the recoil in practice and for the first 9 shots or so the controllability is actually quite good. After that is when the nastier recoil kicks in and there is a definite tendency to drift to the right. This can be improved a bit with the flash hider or the compensator attached, but still, over longer bursts this will make the 416 just a little harder to control than the two other guns. I went ahead and ran a few trials of me trying to control the recoil at 10 meters distance, and as you can see in the background, the 416 with no attachment was the most difficult to control, then the muzzle brake, then the flash hider and then the compensator. And for full mag dumps, this makes complete sense. Once the heavier recoil kicks in, it's the unpredictable side-to-side -side motion that will cause you difficulties and that is the exact component that the compensator helps to mitigate. If you know that you will be performing short bursts only, the muzzle brake can still work for you or you could of course pick the flash hider as a compromise between the two. But whatever you go with here, the fact still remains that the 416 will be more difficult to control compared to the other two guns, with the MP5 in the middle and the AUG A2 taking the win in the handling category for me. And before we sum everything up, there is one last factor to consider. The AUG A2 still comes with the massive additional drawback that it is the only gun in the entire game that takes up a huge amount of screen space when held in the ready position. For a long time, having this giant gun model shoved into my face meant that I avoided the AUG A2 like the plague, and I fully understand that this may well still be a deal breaker for many players out there. So, in conclusion, at the most common combat distances, the takedown power of the 416 and AUG are very closely matched and both beat the MP5, although the MP5 does offer a decent fire rate advantage. In controllability, Wamai's guns come out in front, but the 416 is still very manageable if you make sure to pick the right attachment for your playstyle. 
Then of course you have the ridiculous screen space aspect of the AUG, but for all other categories the differences between the two rifles are not really significant. This leads me to the overall conclusion that when it comes to combat effectiveness, both guns are amongst the best choices you have as a defender, but I would still take the 416 over the AUG A2 if I had the choice. And in addition to the 416C being the slightly better gun overall, Jaeger also comes with the advantage of being a 3 speed operator and as we all know by now, the speed and noise advantages that the lightly armoured characters get in Rainbow Six Siege are a definite plus in winning gunfights. So if fragging is going to be your goal in any given round, Wamai is not a bad choice, but all other things equal, Jaeger should be the better choice here. I've been toying with the idea of setting up a website for some time now and thanks to the guys over at Squarespace I have finally managed to make a start on turning this idea into a reality. I have to say that I've been pleasantly surprised at how easy it really is to get started especially with everything you need conveniently offered in one place. Buying a domain was a simple first step and since Squarespace has over 200 top level domains to choose from it made it really easy to find exactly what I was looking for. The award winning templates that you can choose from make it a breeze to get started even if you don't have any previous web design experience and once everything is set up and live, the integrated website analytics and traffic overview will give you all of the insight you need to see who your audience is, where they're coming from and what content on your site is performing the best. So head over to squarespace.com to start a free trial and when you're ready to get your website off the ground, go to squarespace.com slash rogue9 to get a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. But there is more to operators than simply their gunfighting abilities. Both Wamai and Jaeger are specialists at protecting themselves and their teammates from enemy projectiles of all kinds, but before we dive into a detailed comparison of their main gadgets, let's first look at their secondaries. Both defenders have access to barbed wire which can definitely be a very useful tool on many sites, but whereas Jaeger gets access to a bulletproof cam, useful in a few situations maybe, Wamai gets the new and improved deployable shield. In its current form the deployable shield can basically act as a mini mirror window and it can offer defenders an incredibly powerful position to play behind. A single defender using a shield even in a relatively risky position, as you see me doing here, can basically hold off a push and stall out and even repel an entire attack. This to me makes the shield one of the most valuable secondary gadgets you can bring on defense right now and with Wamai there's still so much more to it than this. The only way in which attackers can deal with tenacious defenders anchoring behind deployable shields is to either use explosive projectiles to destroy the shields or smoke to blind the enemy player. Ok sure, Sledge can theoretically deal with shields too, but he has to get right up close to them which in most cases is not all that helpful. So projectiles it is and Wamai with his primary gadget is perfectly placed to defend himself behind his shield from almost complete safety. Being able to continuously throw out new magnets from behind the shield can make it virtually impossible for the attackers to do anything to destroy the shield and this in my eyes makes Wamai possibly the best anchor in the game right now. It will take a massive amount of utility and coordination to deal with even a less experienced Wamai player behind a shield. Shield. Having the shield instead of the bulletproof cam alone would make me give this round to Wamai, but the synergy between the shield and the magnets is a huge bonus and it more than makes up for the minor advantage Jaeger has in the weapon loadout. But having mentioned the primary gadgets already now, let's finally compare those. Which of these defenders brings the better utility to the team? Their individual gadgets shall be judged on the following parameters. Flexibility and ease of deployment and effectiveness. When it comes to deploying the two gadgets, the results are a bit of a mixed bag. Jaeger gets the advantage of having all three of his active defense systems available immediately during the prep phase so he can fully deploy all of his utility in relative safety if we don't count twitch drones. Wamai on the other hand only has one of his five frisbees ready to go at the start of the match and has to then wait 40 seconds for each of the remaining four discs to become available. So that means that he can deploy two magnets during the prep phase and then it takes 1 minute and 55 seconds for the full utility to develop and that's basically two thirds of a round. 
so Jaeger has an undeniable advantage, but then on the other hand, Wamai is far more flexible with the deployment of his gadget. It takes half a second to bring the ADS out and then at least another 2.5 seconds for the device to be placed, plus another 0.3 seconds to then ready the gun again, which means that Jaeger is going to be vulnerable for a minimum of 3.3 seconds each time he wants to place one of his gadgets. In addition to this, he can only place the device on clear surfaces right in front of him and it can only be walls or floors. Wamai can be far more reactive with his magnets. It takes 0.5 seconds to switch to the gadget and another 0.5 seconds to yeet the disc and then 0.3 seconds to bring out the gun once the disc has been thrown, resulting in a total vulnerability of only 1.3 seconds. In addition to that, he can also stick his discs onto pretty much any surface. Floors, walls, ceilings, under desks, shelves or attached to literally any other kind of map asset and that can be quite useful. When it comes to activation time, Jaeger's ADSs actually become active 150 milliseconds before the deployment animation finishes, so that's 2.35 seconds after you start putting down the device. For Wamai, the activation animation of his device takes 2.25 seconds to play out, but in my tests I discovered that they actually start working 2 seconds after attaching to any surface. So if you ever have to react to an imminent threat from attacker projectiles, Wamai's flexibility in terms of the placement and the quicker activation time are very helpful. My conclusion in terms of the ease of use and flexibility is that Wamai is the winner here. Yes, Jaeger can pre-place all of his assets during the relative safety of the prep phase, but Wamai makes up for his gradual availability handicap with quicker and more diverse deployment options. But which gadget is more effective? Well, Jaeger can deal with up to 6 projectiles. Each of his ADSs can destroy 2 projectiles in flight once they come within 4 meters of the gadget and as long as there is an active sightline. Wamai can only handle 5 projectiles in total, but each of his magnets has a larger effective range of 5 meters with an active sightline. And they don't destroy projectiles, they just redirect them and delay their detonation. Also, you must keep in mind that each magnet will self-destruct after fulfilling its purpose and this small blast alone is capable of destroying your ally's gadgets within a 1 meter radius. Here is a full overview of all of the possible attacker projectiles in the game and how each of the defender gadgets interacts with them. I think in general, destroying the projectiles is a simpler and safer way of handling them and that would be an advantage for Jaeger, but at the same time, the redirection and delayed detonation you get with Wamai can allow for a bit of creativity, but whether or not you can make that work to your advantage is down to you plus a good sprinkling of luck. The magnets do have an undeniable advantage when it comes to Thatcher's EMPs though. If the EMPs go off, they will destroy ADSs while Wamai's gadgets are only temporarily disabled. And then Wamai gets another little advantage in that he can also deal with Gridlock's tracks and Capitao's smoke and fireballs while these gadgets will sail straight past Jaeger's ADSs. And finally, while most objects that get caught in the magnets are indestructible and will definitely go off, Gridlock's tracks Nomad's air jabs and Kali's explosive lances can be shot before they activate. Interestingly, Ying's candelas, which can be destroyed if you shoot them as they're rolling along the floor, cannot be destroyed once caught by the magnets. And Ash's breaching rounds can be shot, which will physically push them away, but they will still explode wherever they land. Hibana pellets are still immune to both of the defensive gadgets. And so, what does all of this mean? Wamai's gadget is definitely more versatile and allows for some creativity, but the fact that projectiles can still go off and that the magnets themselves will blow up means that you need to be far more careful about where you position these devices. The resilience against Thatcher grenades is also a nice little bonus, but on the other hand, Jaeger can handle one more projectile and in most situations destroying the projectile is probably the better option compared to redirecting. Conclusion, 
Well, I'm honestly not quite sure that I can personally give the win to either gadget in terms of effectiveness. If the enemy team bring a Thatcher, Gridlock and Capital, then the Magnets would be the better choice, but I can also see situations in which the one extra charge and the immediate availability of Jaeger's ADSs could be vitally important. Shall we call it a draw in terms of effectiveness maybe? Slightly different, but both very useful. And that then leads us to the final question. Jaeger or Wamai? Who should you pick? The answer for this is, it probably depends mostly on you. If you want to get your gadgets in place nice and early, and then start roaming and fragging, then Jaeger is probably the better choice. He is definitely the slightly stronger operator when it comes to combat. If you want to be anchoring, whether that's on-site, near-site or even off-site, then Wamai's deployable shield combined with the magnets could be a huge asset to you and the flexible nature of his gadget's deployment and the gradual availability could also be helpful as you react to attackers pushing from different angles. I would even go as far as to say that this potential for reactiveness could make Wamai a better choice for less experienced players, since you can simply deploy the magnets one at a time as you discover where the attack is coming from. Deploying the active defense systems in locations that will end up being valuable to your team takes far more experience and knowledge of the most likely attacking routes the enemy team will take. And that at least is my take on these two operators. Two very similar operators whose individual strengths mean that each one could be the more viable choice depending on your personal playstyle as well as the individual situations you might encounter from round to round. What is your opinion on these guys? Do you have a favorite and if so, what is it about their individual characteristics that makes you like one more than the other? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and with that, Many thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.